you sort it down there. So, uh, first of all, I've got to congratulate Bill and Joe on their fantastic speeches. They really were excellent. Uh, although now Mark and I have to try and find some, well, some suitable words to describe Joe. When Joe asked us to be uh, the best pen, the first thought I had was, really, how on earth we're going to stand here and tell his entire family what sort of person Joe is <laughs> and still expect a win to go ahead. <laughs> They all realised the ceremony was earlier than the speeches, so whatever we say, you'll start with him now. <laughs> so, in preparation for this, I was doing some reading on how best to write this speech, and a, a common theme was to say something self-deprecating first. You know, saying to embarrass yourself uh, to get the audience on your side, and then Mark swiftly reminded me that I was ginger, and that was more than embarrassing enough for everything. <laughs> So uh, we didn't really know where to start this speech, to be honest. I mean, how would you describe a man that is so outrageously stupid <laughs> that when sunbathing in Spain, he decides to put cooking oil all over his body to improve his tan? I mean, as you can imagine, that ended badly. <laughs> I thought it best to, to steer clear of stag do goings on, as I'm sure he didn't want his family knowing about the amount of times that he'd been whipped by an abusive Latvian stripper. <laughs> and he certainly didn't want to know about his homosexual tendencies once he's had a drink. <laughs> I knew uh, I couldn't mention anything about the time he got the transvestite on a holiday when, uh, in Spain when he was about 16. That'd be, that'd be far too embarrassing. <laughs> so I thought we'd start with this. Joe is a self-proclaimed survivalist. <laughs> Thinks he can survive in any situation you could drop him into. He's always shouting at the TV when Bear Grylls is on, saying how much better he was. Well, we're going to drop him in the deep end here, and we'll soon see how he survives the wrath of Sophie after this one. I'll never forget the first time I met Joe. Iron Napper, 2009. <laughs> He knew one of my friends quite well, but no introduction was needed. Like a true Brit abroad, Joe had his top off, a WKD in one hand, and immediately I spotted a big tattoo running down his ribs, reading the word Sagittarius. <laughs> Such a brilliant, well thought and fitting tattoo. This is an extract I found from the star side. Sagittarius can be reckless, irresponsible, because they would jump at any suggestion of something new before they weigh the advantages and disadvantages. So I made him down seven WKDs and a few Jager bombs, and for the next ten minutes watched him violently vomit all over the floor while laughing at me. It was the start of a great relationship, and to be honest, not much has changed. Uh, Joe and I actually became friends uh, through an interest in fishing about 11 or 12 years ago. Uh, since then, we've become really, really close friends and uh, been on quite a few trips together. Believe me, a holiday with Joe is like a short-term marriage. Uh, I remember we were taking a trip to France one year, and uh, in the car, all we did was argue about which radio station to have on, uh, or the toilet stops, and that was always going the wrong way. Uh, and that was before he even left the driveway. Um, when we got there, he got on the hump with me, because I didn't take his bags. Um, so I hit the beer and I could just about tolerate a week of moaning from him then. So uh, from previous experience, so um, good luck. Uh, we couldn't really go without saying how honestly amazing how the bridesmaids look. You honestly look stunning. So I think we should have a round of applause for the bridesmaids. <laughs> once again. And again, you've done a wonderful job making the bride look absolutely stunning again. Yeah, Sophie, you look absolutely stunning. Truly beautiful both inside and out. Uh, Joe is incredibly lucky to have found someone so kind, caring and, uh, and forgiving. <laughs> yeah, forgiving. That will certainly be a trait that you uh, fully abuse in the future. When, uh, Joe, when Joe met Sophie, I'm pretty sure it was love at first sight and they haven't looked back since. However... This was not the case when uh, Bill met Joe for the first time. <laughs> Sophie comes home to see her dad on Boxing Day. In her... In, in her? <laughs> 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 
you know? In behind her walks the mess of a man with a broken nose and two black eyes, which I'm sure he proclaimed he was saving a damsel in distress from her, boy her drunk boyfriend on Christmas Eve. I can only imagine what Bill was thinking seeing the guy for the first time, and I bet it wasn't, that is the man that I want to marry my daughter. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the truth behind that story was that he'd actually just left my house so blind drunk he could barely speak. He, uh, he probably thought he could take on the world. Uh, well, he got like, about 200 yards down the road before trying to intervene with a guy having an argument with his girlfriend. And let me say, Joe swiftly got put in his place, <laughs> which can best be described as, I'd say, probably horizontal. <laughs> Uh, next thing I know, he's ringing my doorbell, he's crying, he's got a wonky nose and a bloody face. The next time I saw Joe cry again was for a red liquid, but this time it was ketchup. <laughs> so happy that I offered it to him for his bacon roll when he was severely hungover, he actually couldn't contain his tears and started crying. <laughs> he, he honestly does love ketchup that much. <laughs> Ever since Joe was a young boy, uh, he had the ambition to adventure and see new places. Uh, this was evident early in his life, as at 18 months old, Joe decided that he needed to see what the, the inside of the tumble dryer looked like. Much to the horror of Jackie when she couldn't find him anywhere around the house, and he suddenly burst out the dryer door shouting, SURPRISE! <laughs> Joe running away from his parents was a common theme amongst his younger years. Every time the family left the house for somewhere, it wouldn't be long before he disappeared from the group. When they visited a water park in Cornwall, Joe went wandering off. So as a joke, Jackie, Steve and Lucy decided to hide and observe him from a distance. For a brief moment, Joe stood there with that concerned look on his face. He couldn't spot his family, but instead of panicking like most five-year-old boys would do, he just cut his losses and just went off and queued for the next ride. <laughs> Fast forward 20 years and Joe still has that adventure in him. Uh, last year he packed up his bags and uh, he followed his dream of going travelling. And thankfully some of his friends that he met on this journey are joining us today. I mean it's truly amazing how far some people will come for a free lunch. <laughs> Joe, decided, uh, Joe decided before he went travelling that he would propose to Sophie when she came out to visit him for the last month of his trip. He had it all planned out. He would lead her down a quiet and secluded beach in Borneo where he would wait for the sun to set and get down on one knee. So, the time had come, it was the big night and everything was going to plan. He grabbed the ring box out of his bag while Sophie was in the other room getting ready. And he, he, he then realised that he can see the ring box through his shorts. So he thought, well I'll ditch the box and I'll just keep the ring to avoid suspicion. So everything's still perfect, he's got her out of the house without suspecting a thing. They get to the beach and no one's there. He's thinking, brilliant, this could not be going any better. So they got a little bit of time until to, uh, to sunset, so they decide to take a seat on the beach. As Joe bends to sit down uh, on the sand, he feels a crack in his pocket. The ring snaps. How is that possible? That ring he's carried around for three months travelling, that £10 Argos ring he saved so hard for, <laughs> has snapped in the pocket on the night of the proposal. Forever the optimist, Joe plods on, waits for the sunset, gets down on one knee. Sophie Nicola Russell, will you marry me? Whilst producing not a ring, but two pieces of plastic and a fake gem that had also popped out. <laughs> I think the tears in Sophie's eyes distorted her view that she actually said yes. <laughs> and that's the reason we're all here today, to celebrate the marriage of two of our best friends. Wishing all the health, wealth and happiness in the world. I'd like you all to join me now in toasting the happy couple. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen the bride and groom. Yeah. Thank you very much.